The announcement of Nidus Prime got me super excited, not just for the brand new Prime Warframe, but also for the weapons he came with, the Magnus Prime and the Strun Prime. And even though I would have definitely preferred a Ack Magnus Prime, today it's time for the Strun. We're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 14 primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar and I got a cheap setup, something affordable that most Tenno will be able to build. But of course, you also got a souped up setup with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, Warframe buffs, essentially the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach. I'm gonna be taking my time and explaining whatever I feel is necessary for newer Tenno. So in case you're a vet or you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Strun Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Stern Prime is a semi-automatic primary full-blown pellet shotgun. And as you can see, my friends, it fires a whole lot of pellets. 12 by default, which is up from the usual 10 that the Stern Wraith fires. So as you can see, it's actually pretty accurate. This is 13 meters to the target and all of the pellets are basically within the crossers. And you know what? The actual default fall off supports this kind of playstyle because it begins at 26 meters, which again for a shotgun is pretty huge. I mean, fall off starts here. Again, you are losing some of that accuracy here, but hey, beggars can't be choosy. Let's keep in mind, this is an actual shotgun. You do have that semi-automatic trigger and this is default maximum fire rate. And the reload is 4.6 seconds total, but it's shot by shot. I do believe this is the weapon that coined the whole shot by shot reload mechanic for Warframe at the very least. So let's say, boom, boom, you're killing that guy, then that guy, then that guy, and suddenly you're out of ammo and you gotta reload. You don't need to wait the entire 4.6 seconds, you can reload one or two and then just fire. No problem whatsoever. And I do love the fact that they kept this reload mechanic simply because it adds a whole lot of flavor and personality. I hated that they removed it on the current Prime. And that's pretty much it. Now, objectively speaking, from a functionality perspective, from a usability perspective, while it doesn't really have a whole lot of drop-off for a shotgun and the accuracy is good and the recoil is good, that shot-by-shot -shot reload is not exactly the most DPS-friendly thing in the world. So do bear that one in mind. We're gonna jump into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. We got a mod capacity of 60 out of 60, and in case you're newer to Warframe and you just completed your Storm Prime, you're so happy, you finally finished building it, and it's got 30 out of 30, what gives? Press this little action button right here, plug in that Auto King Catalyst. Now, if you don't have one, you can farm one from the game, but it also costs 20 plat to have one installed. You can grind it from Nightwave, and some events in Warframe also feature this Auto King Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. Some of them need to be built, so you only get a blueprint, and some of them come pre-built. So do bear that one in mind. Is it worth fully upgrading the Stern Prime? Of course, what are you kidding me? It's a monster, my friends. Now, how many farm, laser? <laughs> well, it does come with a dash polarity, which I changed. It's not useless, it's a good polarity to have, but you should change that one to a V. You can get away with two format depending on your build, how far you want to take the weapon, because honestly, for level up until 120, I don't think you need more than two format. You can even get away with one in some cases. Now, the weapon Exilus slot is not really worth unlocking from my humble point of view. You saw how much 26 meters is for the fall off, right? Are you really gonna use it further than that? If you are, unlock the weapon Excel slot and you can put in Fatal of the Acceleration, bumping that up to a glorious 36.4. Now, that's the starting point. The ending point is 72.8. You want even more than that? I got you. Galvanize the Acceleration. And this one offers 30%. But you also get another 30% stacking up two times per kill. So if you want to use this as a sniper and you don't want to have the drop off, you can go for something like this. Other than that, silent battery for kicks and load because silent shotgun, why not? Uh, shotgun ammo mutation, nah. Shell compression, nah. Vigilante supplies, nah. Simply nah. <laughs> because even though you get a nice 20% chance to enhance critical, it's 5% actually. This is a simulacrum bug. You don't get a 20. You get 5 per month. Yeah, it's a simulacrum bug, which they still haven't fixed. It's not like it's been for years. But that's not important. 5% per vigilante mods. 
And you don't need this one simply because you can get it from your Sentinel. But if you're not running a Sentinel, hey, might as well run Vigilante Supplies. Now, accuracy 9.1 on this one. As you saw there, the accuracy for a shotgun is more than reasonable. No complaints whatsoever. Good critical chance, 24%, and a good critical multiplier, 2.2x, both better than the Wraith version. Better fall off than the Wraith. I do believe that the Wraith started off its fall off at 15 meters, so again, a huge increase on that one. Far rate of 3.43, but this one should be taken with a grain of salt, as it should be taken with all semi-automatic weapon that you gotta go click by click. It's true, if you're on PC, you can bind your fire to your scroll wheel or you can make a macro. Careful with macros, these fuzzy on them. They always been fuzzy on them. Don't believe me? Link the cards right now. Their quote is, and I kid you not, you do so at your own risk. Yeah, very gangsta. -y. Multi shot of 12 by default with a magazine of 20. Uh, that's 12 pellets. With no multi shot, you can get to a stupid high amount of multi shot for this weapon. A stupid high amount of pellets. Noise alarming, of course. Punch row of 08, which means it's gonna go for the Grenier Shield, dude. Not bad, not bad. Reload 4.6, but this is the total reload. Again, you can go shot by shot. Riven Dispo 1 out of 5. My friends, you can get Rivens that are that are somewhat worth slotting on this weapon, but honestly, it's gonna be a pain in the arse, it's gonna cost you a whole lot of plat, or you gotta be super lucky. Obviously, Rivens right now for the Storm Prime are simply not worth it because of the very low Riven Dispo. This may change in time, but for the time being, you again, you gotta either be rich, rich or super lucky. One of the two. Status is lower than on the Wraith, only 6.7, but again, you are fighting 20% more pellets, it's still not ideal, but it's okay-ish. Trigger semi and the damage has been not only buffed from 400 to 528, but the layout is smarter, it's better. The Wraith has like, I think, 85% of its damage to impact. This one is a bit more balanced out. You got impact, puncture, and slash, and this will help out. I'm still not a fan of impact because, ew, impact, but this will help out with a very fantastic and newish mod. It's called Galvanized Savvy. You get extra status, um, extra damage per status type affecting the target. So the more default status is on the weapon, the better for this mod. Of course, this will only be present in the end game setup. And that said, my friends, let's have a look at a cheapo, standard, new player friendly setup. Damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance, critical damage with critical deceleration, as well as ravage. Now, of course, you can use the normal version of crit. When it comes to crit, I feel there's always a bit of a discussion to have. You don't like the minus fire rate, which honestly, on this semi automatic weapon, it works a treat. You can go for blunderbuss, which is <laughs> blunderbuss. By the way, you can have both. Right, you can't have blunderbuss and critical deceleration because probably we would have. So you can go for this one, but if you really mind that fire rate, you might as well go for laser sight and that 120% on headshot while aiming. This one comes with no no drawbacks. Considering the weapon's functionality and how you're supposed to use it, I would definitely go with critical deceleration. Got up to 72.5, uh, 72.0 critical chance. What do you know, 100 munitions this year? You surprised? I know, but we'll try a uh, corrosive setup with big bada boom damage right after this one. And of course, the 260, 60 vital mods, frigid blast, uh, and toxic barrage together, they will be forming vital damage. Once again, I would like to stress out this is a more of a new player friendly setup. None of these mods are hard to get, none of these mods are expensive, and they're not even expensive from an endo perspective. Look at that, five little balls to upgrade. Now, critical decelera deceleration might be like, okay, never heard of this mod. If you're that new to Warframe, this one is obtained by doing Volt Runs. And if you don't know how to do Volt Runs, link the cards right now. You're gonna get a lot of great mods by doing Volt Runs. These are called Corrupted Mods, which is why they have a positive and a negative stat as well. Kinda like Rivens, only not Rivens, because they're not Rivens. And the last slot, this will be an option slot, you can plug into this one, whatever you feel comfortable with. We're gonna touch on Arcanes really, really soon. There's three versions, right? Primary, Deadhead, Dexterity, and Merciless. Dexterity, honestly, in normal average everyday gameplay, a Tenno, a average Tenno, I assume will be using his melee as well, so obviously this is the way to go. But if you don't like your melee because you're tired of the same old, same old, same old, same old, then you might want to go for primary Deadhead or primary Merciless. Deadhead is for builds that don't 
make procs kill your target. If your target is gonna die under the effect of a slash or a fire proc, heat proc, whatever, or whatever else damage over time that your weapon caused, then you're not gonna get the benefit from Deadhead. Deadhead would only get your get the benefit on if you directly smack the target's head and from the impact damage it dies out, which is why Primary Merciless is always the safe choice. So do go for this one as long as you're building something like Hunter Munitions. What should we plug into this one? Well, my friends, you want cheap and easy and always effective multi-shot. Look at the pellet count from 26.4 to 33.6. How does that work? Do they cut a pellet in half? <laughs> no, not exactly. When you see a point something per shot, let's see right now, 26.4. Right, so per shot, you got to guarantee 26 pellets. They're going to fly out with each and every single shot, which is fantastic, which is with their own status chance and a chance to apply this and that and so on and so forth. So you're going to be putting a lot of statuses into your target. Now the point four works like this. It's a 40% chance per shot at a 27th pellet. You get how that one works? So if I was to go with Vigilante Armaments, I'm going to 33 pellets and a 60% chance per shot at a 34th pellet. There you go. That's one solid option. This is a hunter munition setup, is it not? So going for more critical chance is basically a no-brainer. More crit means more slash. So we're gonna go like so laser sight with another 120% critical chance. This will help out with hunter munitions. This one is also easy to get and cheap just like vigilante armaments. Oh, let's check to make sure we don't have any buffs that will skew the test results. Arcanes, uh, Corrosive Projushu and all of that good stuff. Fantastic mods and increases, but not in order. First, ideally, you go want to go with without Warframe buffs when you're testing your stuff just to see exactly how powerful your weapon is standing on its own two feet. Now, the test for... Yeah. The test for a slash build is to put a couple of shots into your target. Tell about 50%, then watch if the slashes kill off your target. The thing is, you want to get at least one vital proc on your target. So, I usually it usually takes one to two shots maximum to kill off a level 120 corrupted heavy goon with a build such as this. Now, I normally in gameplay don't really stop to wait, do they have the procs on or not? I just put in a whole lot of shots in them until I see that health bar like that drop really, really quickly. As you can see, the weapon of, is very effective. It should be effective. It's the latest Prime. Now, granted, Prime weapons are not necessarily the best like they used to be. Once upon a time when you said Prime, that's it, man. That has to be one of the best weapons in game. We got so many weapons nowadays. Kuva weapons, Tenant weapons, whatever weapons, that Primes are just kind of like on the level for the most part. It really depends on what Prime you're talking about, but as you can see, the weapon is clearly very effective, even with a cheapo, ordinary, average, everyday build. You're putting a whole lot of slashes into your target, which is fantastic, and just a couple of vital procs. You don't need a whole lot of vital procs, but I would love if the weapon was a bit more um, efficient at it. In order to increase the efficiency of your vital procs or get more vital procs per shot, look at that, beautiful, five vital procs and 18 slashes, you can increase the status chance of the weapon. If you galvanize savvy, then just go for galvanize savvy. No galvanize savvy, you can simply go for the normal version. Now you can also do one additional thing. Here's another... Not a bad choice, not a bad choice, you can go for Scattering Inferno. When it comes to shotguns, the thing is, you got so many fantastic mods. Blaze! 60% damage, 60% heat, pound to pound, this adds a whole lot of damage to your weapon. You want the uh, point blank, but, but, but with a little bit of spread, you got Vicious Spread. This one has the same amount of damage, 90%, but with some spread. It goes to 5.7 accuracy. That 5.7 doesn't really tell the whole story, but again, the point is you have a whole lot of options when it comes to mods. That said, let's have a look at a more beefed up setup. It would look something like this. This is a version of it. You got prime point blank with damage. You got critical chance, critical damage again with critical deceleration, but with prime ravage. This one, still hunter munitions, galvanized hell, the galvanized version of hell's chamber. We got galvanized savvy as well. And of course, still the 260-60 mods forming viral damage and galvanized acceleration with primary merciless. Now this would be, I have all the mods in the game, all right? I have no problem with resources and all whatnot. And I simply want to build a more powerful, a more souped up stern prime. This is a way you can go. And I want to showcase the difference. 
keep in mind that we got galvanized mods that need kills to stack and primary merciless which basically needs the same thing in order to get the build in full swing you will have to get a couple of kills first but even without kills you can see from the get-go that this one does pack a much greater punch and that galvanized savvy helps a whole lot not just not just because of the extra damage that you get per kill but also because of that extra status chance it adds easier viral to the targets as you can see and of course i'm in the one shot zone without any problems whatsoever that was 57 slash 60 something slash 71,000 slash one more or two more targets right here boom baby beautiful beautiful i'm all stacked up and ready to go if you know what i mean look at him go mama look at him go now, I did promise you guys that would do a corrosive version of the setup, so why the hell not? Not necessarily a corrosive version of the setup, because obviously my targets are equipped with ferrite armor, which will be taking 75% more damage from corrosive. What we can do right now is a more beefed up setup, in the sense that we can do a whole lot more impact damage. It's not gonna be as in-game as Hunter Munitions, but you know what? For me, at the very least, it is a whole lot more fun. So let's try it out. We're not gonna need the... Uh, we're not gonna need hunter munitions anymore because basically if you don't have vital on your target there's it's pointless to go with hunter munitions you can apply vital with something else maybe you want to apply vital with your little kitty or maybe you want to apply vital with your melee or, or with your secondary you can use a primer like that galvanized savvy i would keep regardless this one is a whole lot of powerful you can even drop prime point blank if you want to now a lot of players nowadays t tells you listen drop point blank or prime point blank or the normal damage mod that you have your on your primary secondaries and so on because we got a uh, status and damage galvanized mod for primary secondaries and medies in doing that it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to be getting better results necessarily it will get you better results for super high level content i'm talking about levels in the thousands steel path and all whatnot but for normal level content let's see normal content would be something like up until 150 having that preloaded damage will help your clear time a whole lot more Okay, because you don't need to stack anymore and you will be clearing the room a whole lot faster. So again, think about it when you mod your guns. Go and dropping your flat damage straight off the bat is not necessarily the smartest idea. What was I doing? Ah, yes! We were building gun. We were building gun, mama. So let's build gun with corrosive. Now, for the biggest wallop worth of corrosive, you want to go with something like... Ah, I can't. God damn it. No! There we go, man. Prime charge shell, 165% electricity. Let me make one thing clear. This is not necessarily the smartest build you can go for. Obviously not. But it is a whole lot of fun, and I do like me fun. Let's go for some heat. For example, in a setup like this one, blades would be fantastic. 60% damage, 60% heat. Beautiful, beautiful. But I don't have the capacity, so we're just gonna go with scattering inferno instead. Wait, yes, yes, no, yes, no, mama. Of course, corrosive and heat on my weapon. Adding one more element will definitely help with Galvanized Savvy as well. Now let's hit them Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. Again, we're gonna need a couple of kills to get the build rolling. Two shots to kill a target. I'm, I'm reloading a shot after every kill out of Reflex, because I used to play with the Stern Ray. What a fantastic weapon. And as you can see, my friends, I'm already in one-shot territory, no... No procs, no anything. And you might say, okay, Lazar, if you one-shot these guys without any problem whatsoever, why should I bother with hunter munitions, slash procs, and all of that nonsense when you're just straight up killing them? While well, this may be more efficient at this level, pump up these targets to about level 1500 if you do that, right? And you will see that the hunter munitions setup becomes a lot more impactful and a lot more efficient than this this will lose traction really quickly when it comes to super high level content now i feel obligated in some to some degree to keep on mentioning these things even though i am fully aware that the very vast majority of you guys never do things like endurance runs in steel path to meet level cap or level 7000 or whatever thousand because it's pointless from a whole other player's perspective i understand that but i will still mention what will be doing more damage in what situation and there he goes there she goes my bad my bad and that's pretty much it for a souped up setup of course we can do even better than that now this is my favorite part of each and every review please tell me i turned on the mic yes i did great mirage prime 
Mm, 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 mama. I love Mirage Prime. She is, by all intents and purposes, my favorite frame. She's not the most powerful frame in the Warframe. In Warframe, definitely not. She's not the most endgame worthy if you found your endgame, but she's my favorite. For objective reasons, of course, which I will highlight. Now, when it comes to heavily armored targets, you gotta go for corrosive projection. Do I? Do I really gotta go? No, you don't. No, you don't. It's fine even without, but it is <coughs> meta. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful, however. Arcane Avenger, the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe from my point of view. On damage, 21% chance for another 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. This is a bonus additive after, right? So it simply stacks on top of what you already have. It doesn't care about the base stats of your weapon, about the base critical chance. It applies to primary, secondary, and to melee at the exact same time, which is absolutely fantastic. Arcane Acceleration, well, you can actually use this one, but on a semi-automatic weapon, I wouldn't really bother. How about some rage? No, not that kind of rage, this kind of rage, more damage to primaries. Keep in mind that the build that we have right now on the weapon is based on brute strength alone. This is something I would take into everyday content, and this one will further amplify that on a headshot, 15% chance for plus 180% damage for the weapons for 24 seconds. Both of these arcanes can be farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. If Eidolon hunting still proves uh, intimidating to you, don't. It's so easy nowadays. Anybody can do it. Just head on over and farm some Eidolons. Or if not, you know what? There's like events that you can get your Arcanes. I forgot which one it was. Or you can just buy them from the trade shot. And that is that. Sentinel trick time. Get yourself any Sentinel you want, my friends. For example, I'm quite partial to the Djinn. I really like the Djinn because he's got a scarf. That's a skin. Okay, so obviously he is the best Sentinel. But honestly, Carrier still... Is one of the best sentinels simply because you get the uh, you get the ammunition back. When it comes to the stern prime, however, you don't really need that. On any sentinel that you choose, make sure that on the sentinel's weapon you have the four vigilante mods, offense, supplies, fervor, and armaments, granting that 20% chance to enhance crit from uh, fr from primary weapons. Now, even if your little sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain this buff. So do bear that one in mind. We're gonna pump up the level. Dear Digital Extremes, if you are watching, can we please be able to spawn super high level enemies in Simulacrum? We're gonna go to 160. Now, please, super high level, 4,000, 5,000, whatever thousand I want, and allow me to put in some modifiers like you do for Steel Path. A level, I don't know, extra armor, shields, and all of that good stuff, so I can simulate the experience in Steel Path a whole lot better. Pretty please. Because if not, I gotta stay in Steel Path for hours and hours to test this, and think about it, you gotta stay like, let's say, like an hour to reach the desired level, then I realize, oh, what if I change this mod? Then I gotta extract, and change the mod, then go back, then stay a whole while in that one again as well. It's not exactly very efficient for testing, at least not from a showcase perspective. Okay, enough rambling, here we go! Activate Empower for Mirage and her free ability for an absolutely glorious damage increase. Beautiful buffs, and speaking about buffs, her ever so lovely clones. Haha, <laughs> the animations in Warframe. Uh, is this overkill? Of course it's overkill, what are you talking about? It was a one-shot before, what do you think? It wasn't gonna be a one-shot now, the amount of damage Mirage Prime can deal. Oh god damn! Even with the falloff, now this guy wasn't affected by the fall off, but that guy had a little bit of fall off. One shot each and every single time. I love running with Mirage, let's say level 100 mission, something like Sortie 3 or a little bit above. It's so gloriously satisf satisfying. And if you think she can't survive, well, what we can turn off invincibility. It is true, Mirage does have, even with the shield gating and all the tricks and all on, whatnot, sometimes she still has trouble surviving certain encounters. But as you can see, you should be fine. Now, my motto is kill them before they kill me. <laughs> How does that sound? Legit? Legit. As for the Stern Prime, it's an increase in every single way over the Wraith. Let's be honest, nobody really used the Stern, the normal Stern. I think we got the, so we got oh, the actual pronunciation is Stern, right? Stern. So you got the MK1, you got the normal, you got the Wraith. This one is by far the best version we got. And what I love about it is that it kept its identity. And that from the perspective of a older player in Warframe is fantastic because I want our old iconic weapons to still be present and relevant in Warframe. I don't want them to quietly go into the night if that makes any sorts of sense. 
But I also gotta be honest, this compared with all the new fangled weapons, your tenant weapons, your Kuva weapons with their fancy mechanics and their light shows and all whatnot, it might seem a little bit obsolete. But one thing is clear, it definitely packs one hell of a punch and I highly recommend it. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all actuality, I can exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because sometimes these things can take a while to make. But what I can promise you, I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, live streams, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, hey, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.